Hi, welcome to Solution Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of solutions. Specifically, we're going to look at solute, solvent, and solution, soluble, insoluble, and solubility, miscible and immiscible solutions, concentrated versus dilute, solubility of ionic substances, solubility of molecular substances, and finally, discuss the term like dissolves like. So let's start off by talking about some solution terminology. The first term that you need to know is the term solute. Solute is the substance or substances that are present in lesser amounts in solution. Solutes can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So an example of a solid solute in a liquid solvent could be something like cocoa powder in hot cocoa. An example of a liquid solute in a liquid solvent might be food coloring in water. Or a gas solute in a liquid solvent could be carbon dioxide in soda. Finally, think about a solid solute in a solid solvent. So a metal alloy like bronze. The solvent is the substance present in greater amount in the solution. Typically, this is the liquid portion. Solutions in which water is the solvent are called aqueous solutions and have the symbol AQ written as a subscript. Putting them all together, we have a solution, a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances that are usually present in unequal amounts. Remember, these mixtures do not contain visibly different parts, so think of a situation like salt water. What does it mean to dissolve? To dissolve is to separate into component parts, smaller parts. Whether or not something will dissolve depends on the intramolecular forces, like ionic versus covalent, to determine how a compound dissolves. The term soluble means capable to be loosened or dissolved. Insoluble means incapable of being dissolved. And solubility is the amount, so we quantify this, of a substance that dissolves in a given volume of solvent or solution at a given temperature. What does it mean when something is miscible? When two liquids mix to form a homogeneous mixture, in a solution, this is miscible. All mixtures involving two or more gases form miscible solutions. So an example is ethyl alcohol dissolved in water, and we'll look at more at that later. Immiscible is when two liquids cannot mix to form a homogeneous solution, as we see in this image right here. Oil and water do not mix. They are immiscible. Concentrated. Concentrated is a solution with a relatively large amount of solute dissolved. For example, my coffee has a high concentration of sugar and caffeine, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Dilute is a solution with a relatively small amount of solute dissolved. So in other words, weak coffee does not have much caffeine dissolved in solution, and therefore I say, what's the point? Solubility of ionic substances in water. Ionic solids, such as sodium chloride, are neutral compounds that have individual ions arranged in a crystal lattice structure, a regular geometric pattern. That's what we're looking for. So here's an example of a crystal structure in front of us. So we could imagine that these green circles are our chloride ions and these purple ones are our sodium ions. Not to scale, of course, but then we'd have Cl minus 1 and Na plus 1, and we'd see them in a repeating pattern. That is basically an ionic substance. When these solids are placed into a polar solvent, such as water, the crystal lattice structure breaks down and the ions are separated and dispersed through the aqueous solution. We can see this in the simulation below, where sodium chloride as a solid will break down in water to form sodium ions and chloride ions. So here we have our sodium chloride being shaken in. 
We can see it starts as a solid and then it breaks down into individual ions that completely separate from each other. If we shake in sodium nitrate, we'll see something very similar, still in a one to one ratio, but the sodium ions will completely dissolve and be separate from the nitrate ions. The nitrate ions, of course, are not going to break down into nitrogen and oxygen because they're covalently bonded. The strong ionic forces that hold the sodium chloride crystal together are overcome by the strong attractions between ions and the polar water molecules. This type of intermolecular force is known as ion dipole forces of attraction, where if you look at this representation, we have a sodium chloride crystal in the middle, and then we can see the water molecules pulling off the different ions. And then the sodium ion is surrounded by water molecules here, where the water molecules orient themselves so that the oxygen is facing inwards because we know the oxygen is slightly negative, while the hydrogens are slightly positive, and the sodium ion is definitely positive. In the other situation, the chloride ion, which is negative, the water molecules are going to orient themselves so that the slightly positive hydrogen ends are facing inwards towards the chloride ion and the oxygens are facing outwards. So that's something to pay attention to. In the video below, notice how each polar water molecule orients itself in a way to maximize its attraction with a chloride ion or a sodium ion and then pulls that ion away from the ionic crystal. These are intermolecular attractions between an ion, chloride ion or sodium ion, and a molecule of water. So if we play the simulation really quickly, we put the sodium chloride in, and we could see here that in general, the chloride ions are surrounded by water molecules with the hydrogen ions facing in, and the sodium ions are oriented in a way where the red oxygen is oriented towards the positive sodium ion. When sodium chloride dissolves in water, the resulting solution conducts an electric current due to the presence of mobile electrolytes. Now remember, when solid sodium chloride dissolves in water, it forms charged particles. When it forms those charged particles, electrons are able to move through the solution. So if we look in this simulation, if we put a conductivity tester into pure water, the light bulb is not going to go on because there's no charged particles. But once we start adding the sodium chloride, as in the salt here, we know that there will be sodium ions and chloride ions being added, charged particles, and now when we put the conductivity tester in, we could see that the light bulb went on. See, on, off, and on again. Solubility of polar covalent substances in water. Water dissolves many non-ionic substances such as sugar and ethanol. Why is ethanol so soluble? So this is a molecule of ethanol below. And the key thing here that I want you to pay attention to is this oxygen on the end. And we know that it should have two lone pairs right there. If I add water molecules, we can form hydrogen bonds between the ethanol and the water molecules. So this hydrogen, which is gonna be slightly positive, is gonna form a hydrogen bond with this water molecule right here, and the oxygen with its lone pair is going to form a hydrogen bond between the slightly positive hydrogen end of this water molecule. These hydrogen bonds will pull the ethanol molecules away from each other. Now the key thing to remember here is that no covalent bonds at all are harmed as ethanol dissolves in water. They still stay as a whole molecule. This will not break down into individual hydrogen, oxygen, or carbon atoms. But if we had pure ethanol, which has its own sense of intermolecular forces going on, and we put that and we mix it with water, the two will mix together because they have similar polarities and they are able to form hydrogen bonds with each other. So, just as hydrogen bonds form among water molecules in pure water, ethanol molecules can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules in a solution. Substances that are insoluble in water. Many substances do not dissolve in water. So for example, when petroleum leaks from a damaged tanker, it does not disperse uniformly in the water. 
In other words, it doesn't dissolve, but rather floats on the surface because the oil is less dense than the water. Petroleum is a mixture of molecules like the one shown in the image below. Since carbon and hydrogen have very similar electronegativity values, the bonding electrons are shared almost equally and the bonds are essentially nonpolar. And in general, if we look at this molecule right here, we could say to ourselves, definitely that molecule is nonpolar as a whole. The resulting molecule with its nonpolar bonds is not compatible with the polar water molecules, which prevents it from being soluble in water. So this section and this section are not going to mix together because the petroleum is nonpolar, the water molecules are polar, and they will not mix due to the difference in the molecular polarity of the molecules. Like dissolves like. We observe that a given solvent usually dissolves solutes that have polarities similar to its own. Water dissolves most polar solutes. So water dissolving chemical salts, I know you're thinking, well, those are ionic compounds, but think of ionic compounds as being like the extreme polar situation, so polar that they actually make ions. Nonpolar solvents dissolve nonpolar solutes, like dry cleaning solvents used for removing grease stains from clothes are nonpolar liquids. So when you take something to the dry cleaner, you're literally dry cleaning it. No water is involved. Instead, they're using other solvents to remove dirt and grease and other things like that. Grease is composed of nonpolar molecules, so a nonpolar solvent is needed to remove a grease stain. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over the definitions of solute, solvent, solution, soluble, insoluble, and solubility, miscible and immiscible, concentrated versus dilute. We talked about the solubility of ionic substances, the solubility of molecular substances, and finally talked a little bit about the term like dissolves like. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.